Welcome to our next panel. This panel is Comics and Meditative Intention. I'm your moderator. My name is Rob Clow. And with us, we have uh, along the North American coast, we've got real triangulation here. We've got uh, Jason Shiga in Oakland, California. We have Kyler Roberts uh, in Evanston, Illinois, near Chicago. And then we have Hartley Lynn in Montreal, Canada. So, um, and I'm down here in Durham, North Carolina. So I'm kind of breaking up the triangle, but uh, we have guests from all over. And uh, today we're gonna talk about um, perhaps something a little esoteric, but I'm inter it's, it's related to not just artist practices, but I'm interested in the way that artists think um, about the nature of what they're doing as artists. And I'll start it off with Kyler because it's actually the whole idea for this panel came from a conversation I had with her. And the conversation was this, in that I talked about Linda Berry and her book, What It Is. And what it is, in addition to being um, a book that was about how to write and how to break through writer's block and things like that, address the notion of why we create itself. And uh, the two central ideas that she brings up that we'll be pondering here are this. First of all, she talks a lot about children and the way they approach art and the way they approach the concept of play. And in her observation and from her memory, she considers play for children, it's not a, it's not a happy-go-lucky thing. Uh, it's a very serious thing. And it's almost a meditative state where children are actively engaging their imagination in a very specific, directed way. It's, it's a kind of work. Um, and then secondly, simultaneously, she views children when they're doing art as just simply, it's a thing that children do. It's uh, the, the urge to like make marks on the page. Um, it's something that a child barely needs to be shown how to do in order to do it. It's, it's immediately pleasurable and they do it and they draw and they create and they, and uh, both play and art uh, in her estimation are both forms of like creating stories, creating narratives um, in your own head and on paper. And that things only get difficult when you get older and you start to think about what you're doing. And you ask yourself what she calls the two questions. Is this good? Does this suck? And that if in the moment you're thinking about those two questions, you are incapable of actually drawing or writing or creating or doing anything because you're sucked up into it. Um, when I brought up this idea of play as a serious thing, Kyler immediately disagreed with me and said that for her play is something different. So I'm interested in hearing your perspective <laughs> on um, what, what it means, what play means to you and what play means to you uh, in particular as an artist and your kind of frame of mind when you're approaching the page. Yeah, that's what was a lot of questions that are so good. Um, I don't remember what I said to you and what I meant at that time, but I can talk just about like right now. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, I think that when kids are playing they do follow their own rules. And I think different kids play with a different set of internal logic, but I think they're very true to it. So I think like when somebody writes a, a book, whether it's autobiographical or fiction, there are general rules that we um, maintain. Like you basically, you don't break the fourth wall. You, your characters like have the same names throughout and they, you know, look, identifiably the same usually throughout you know um like you don't it doesn't occur to you to draw the same character as a woman and then a bear you know and then a man 
um, certain writers do really play with those rules. They'll, you know, especially like science fiction writers or whatever, or, you know, they will play with identity to such extreme lengths that a character could actually be a bear, you know, suddenly. Um, but I, like, I had so many rules when I played as a kid and there was a seriousness to it. And I also like really played with dolls until I was old. So I have a very sharp memory of it. It's not like I'm trying to recall a kindergarten or something. Um, but like my dolls were Cabbage Patch Kids um, and they all had names and personalities and a structure. And there was a whole hierarchy. I had 13 of them and my best friend had like seven and we played school. And they had friend groups and like an interests and you know it was basically as if we were writing a book but that never got written you know and every session that we played built on the chapter before it and there was one point where we were get, we were like in sixth grade and um it was a way of reflecting like not being popular too, you know, it's kind of like we had the popular click and we could control them. <laughs> that was really great. <laughs> and we had like jock, you know, athletic dolls and you could be everything. And like the naughty dolls are always like the funniest, fun, most fun to play. Anyway, there was one moment where I think our dolls, they either kissed or like they wore bras or they did something that was like a little too old for where they were and it was kind of like pushing where we were too and I remember like waking up after the sleepover and feeling like like almost nauseous like that can't have happened <laughs> we went too far <laughs> and so like we had to then like create a scenario to undo what we had done it had to be explained as a dream sequence or something it was just like a novel like you can't just like put down the book like you have to confront what happened because it really happened. So my daughter, like I, I play with her and she's 10 now and she does all these things that like break my rules for play. Um, we were playing dolls and she has these characters with her best friend and they're all sorted out and they're different ages and everything. And like, she's playing with American girl dolls that all look like they're nine. They're supposed to be like one age and she makes them like five and 15 and stuff like that. And I'm like, you can't do that. You can't do that. An American Girl doll cannot be five. It cannot be 15. <laughs> you know? it's like, I'm like, stop being so creative here. <laughs> it's not realistic anymore. But she was playing, um, we were playing dolls. And then I was like, okay, I'll play with you. Are we going to have our dolls be the same characters they are with your friend? Or are we going to use these dolls to be like different characters and make up our own scenario? And she's like, Mine is going to be the same character, but two years in the future. <laughs> I was like, this is exactly the kind of thought that a writer has, you know, um, an, or an artist. Like you create some kind of guidelines, you know, and it could be like, am I going to have panels or not? Am I going to have dialogue? Is there going to be narration or not? You know, all these things. Is it going to be in color, black and white? Um, all that stuff is serious and it is play and it is worked out in the mind of the artist and it's only as flexible sort of as their mind. And there's usually a reason that we don't even know sometimes like why we hold on to our rules or our guidelines, but like they're very necessary. And so the thing about um, like Linda Berry, when she's talking about like even young children, um, like drawing that they'll be acting something out and it, it's like they're creating a world and it doesn't, whatever they're drawing doesn't necessarily look like how an artist, you know, a trained artist would draw it. Um, it is actually still really representational. Like if you read the child psychology of artwork, um, even when kids are drawing like the amoeba, it's a circle and all these like things, like those things do represent arms and legs and they're not just like tendrils, you know, like this, like the moment a child can draw, they are representing something, even if it's just circles, like they all draw the same shapes and they, it all means something. And so that those questions, I'm answering all your questions at once. I obviously thought like too much about this. I swear to God, I will let people talk and I don't even have to talk a second time. It's, 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 it's <laughs> fine. Get it all done. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um i can't help it we will um, have some back and forth eventually <laughs> it will be a panel um 
this her two questions is it good or does it suck you know like that that judgmental mindset um it's self-consciousness and it can kill it does put inhibitions on you as an artist and as a child you know like she talks about how you stop drawing in public because then you're worried about whether it's good or not and not just like what you were doing um i think that no matter how playful your approach is something does have to be good according to me in order for me to make it like and if it's not if it comes out like not good i will destroy it i mean that is like absolutely in me and it could even be playful something that just doesn't um that doesn't have anything to do with like seriousness or play or fun or whatever there is a a goal um and i feel like i don't know i i feel like i wouldn't i believe in the process and the quality of the process for sure but for it to be a good process it can't just be do anything and anything is fine that's like something I fear more than anything. Like I took a dance class and we learned all these steps and then it was like, okay, now we're just going to do anything. Have fun. Don't be self-conscious. And it's like, that is fucking impossible. You know, I like, I will leave. <laughs> I can't move around unselfconsciously. Now it's not fun. It was fun when I was following directions. <laughs> wow. I mean, that that's a lot of interesting replies to that in terms of structure. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you, you answered everything I said in a really interesting way, but I'm very curious about, let's go with Jason and your your kind of take on play versus seriousness and the mindset of like, you know, childhood versus adulthood and self-consciousness with regard to your own comics. Um, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, in a way, in a way, I might, I might kind of be the the opposite of what Linda Berry said, because you know, um, as an adult, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm. I, you should see me at the drawing desk. I'm, I'm just like, wee, this is fun. <laughs> um, but uh, I, re- I, I have very distinct memories when I was a kid. I was, you know, I was, I was actually very serious, um, and. Uh, and it's something um, I've got a I've got a kid of my own now. He's eight years old, so you know sometimes I'll right. you know I'll spy on him when he's drawing, and uh, you know and and um, he's uh, actually I guess I guess this is kind of agreeing with Linda Berry's point because um, he's he's also uh, pretty serious um, when he when he makes art, um, but uh, but I well here's. Um, I'm kind. I'm kind of at the age now where it's hard to kind of put myself into a, you know, into an eight-year-old's mind and, you know, imagine like what's going through, his, you know, my son's head when he's drawing. But I, I do have a very distinct memory of uh, when I was, I was actually uh, eight years old. I was at an art class in school, and uh, I remember we were uh, we were drawing elephants. And um, I had a, you know, I had a photo of an elephant from National Geographic. And I was, you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to capture this elephant as accurately as possible. I was like trying to get like every little wrinkle um, and just, you know, just make it super detailed, um, you know, this, you know, this black and white line drawing. And then, um, and yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was coming out great. And then I remember my art teacher was like, she was like, Jason, art is, isn't about capturing reality. It's about expressing yourself. And, you know, it's the, instead of, you know, try, trying to draw an accurate picture of this elephant, you know, why, why don't you use like finger paints and like this big fat brush and, the, you know, and draw with your arm. And then I was like, okay, that sounds good. And then I remember I did it and it looked like garbage. <laughs> I was like, my art teacher is wrong. <laughs> and then I went, I went back to, you know, pe- you know, like obsessive pencil line drawings, like, you know, trying to capture every detail. Well, it's funny because when you became a cartoonist and in your early work, um, but even especially now, 
you've got a very an extremely stripped down approach. Um, and in some of your earlier in particular, you use like stick figures. Um, what kind of led you to that approach after when you were younger, kind of like a lot of young cartoonists do worry about naturalistic aspects to this kind of like far more expressive. And you're right when I, it's like, if there was a sound associated with like the way I think of your art, it would be, <laughs> there's a kind of like gleefulness on your page, no matter what's going on. Um, yeah, well, I think, you know, it's, uh, I think it's sort of a natural, a natural path for um, a cartoonist, uh, which is, uh, I think they, they usually start, start off a little more detailed um, in the beginning of their careers and, uh, you know, try to, try to strip down um, their style to, uh, to the essentials. Uh, just, just cause it takes so long. It takes, it you know it takes so long to make a you know uh you know to do something uh you know like in the autumnal style or something or mobius um it would yeah i mean you know if uh otomo didn't have any assist assistance or whatever that akira would be like a lifetime's worth of work more than you know more than what any one human could do in a lifetime um so i think yeah i think a lot a lot of it is just um of my current style is just, uh, you know, just being practical. Uh, you know, I want to, you know, I want to tell stories, um, which is, you know, which is hard, which is hard to do. Um, if, uh, you know, if you're, you know, if, if you're making only whatever, 30 pages a year. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, as for, as for Glee, it's, uh, you know, it's, it is like you imagine uh, every day at the drawing desk. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself feeling self-conscious in the way I've described, or is it just like come naturally when you, when you get this? Because again, it's like you have a kid, you're busy, you're doing other things. When you get to the drawing table, is it just, this is, this is fun time now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, there's uh, um like uh, the what was what were the two questions? Is it good and does it suck? Yeah, those are the two <laughs> questions. Is this good? Does this suck? Or like the parallel? Um, I I I I actually ask myself one of those questions. I ask myself, does it suck? Because uh, I don't. Uh, I rarely ask myself, is it good? Um, but uh, yeah, if it's if. If a drawing sucks or if a page sucks, uh, then I'll then I'll scrap it. Um, if it's not good, that's fine. I'll leave it. Um, it's uh, I think uh, what was it? I think it was Howard Hawks who said, uh, you know, a good movie has three good scenes and no bad ones. Uh, that you know, that's how that's how I feel about my comics. I want you know, if, as long as there's you know three you know three good scenes and you know no sucky ones, that's fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I don't get super self-conscious, but, uh, I guess the one thing, um, oh, maybe, yeah, well, I, there's two other parents here, uh, maybe they could, uh, add something to this, but, um, one, one thing I'm, I'm super worried about with my kid is, um, <laughs> some, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'll draw with my son and, uh, you know, you know, I'll set up like a little still life, you know, with a fruit bowl. And then, you know, we'll both, uh, you know, we'll both try to draw a bowl of fruit or something. And then, uh, you know, uh, after, after we're done, my kid, you know, will look at my drawing and he'll be like, wow, that's really good. And then he'll look at his own drawing. And by comparison, it sucks. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything. <laughs> Let's be real here. He's eight years old. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it can, I, can, I can imagine how that it would be discouraging um, to, you know, to someone young, you know, just starting out to, you know, 
to, you know, to keep all such garbage, you know, compared to your dad. Uh, anyway, that's, that, that is one, one thing I'm kind of trying to avoid. Um, but, but I mean, how, how, do, how does he, how do you think he, how does he feel? It's sort of like, does it give him something to aspire to? Do you give him lessons or teach him or do you just kind of leave him to his own devices and like, yeah, he'll figure it out. Um, you know, I try, I try to, you know, I try to teach him a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, to be, to be honest, I think, um, I don't think he's inspired so much as, uh, you know, uh, kind of dis discouraged a little bit, uh, you know, when, you know, it's, you know, I don't know, it's a lot to live up to. Yeah, my daughter goes through my work and I'm like, mom, I can't believe this. The perspective is so off here. Oh my God, look at that hand. That's ridiculous. That looks like I drew it. No, that's worse than that if I drew it. Like she, <laughs> that's her favorite activity. It's <laughs> pointing out what's wrong with my drawings. <laughs> so uh, yeah, wait wait until your son is a preteen and that, the, the attitude change a little bit. Well, I, I, actually, um, I actually remember... Uh, uh, making art with my dad. My dad. Uh, my dad was an artist. Um, oh. He. Uh, I, I like. I like to brag a little bit because he was. Uh, he was. He was one of the uh, the people who worked on the uh, the Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer Christmas Special. Oh wow! But um, but yeah, when I was when I was younger, uh, uh, I would do uh, uh, sumie with uh, with my dad. It's like a kind of a traditional Japanese watercolor. And uh, yeah, I yeah, that those those are actually some of my fa favorite memories I have of my dad. And uh, how how were your watercolors compared to his? Did you feel like it's like oh man, they're so much better than mine? Did, did that discourage you? Uh, it did not. But I mean, let's face it, my you know my sumi was pretty good. I can <laughs> uh, I can show I can show you some. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, all right, we'll come back to that, but let's uh, let's listen to Hartley for a while. Um, again, on these topics, and for you, uh, it's interesting because all of your styles are so radically different. Um, you know, Kyler's style is just very, um, very gestural, gestural, expressive. A lot of first line, best line, in order to like kind of get the immediacy of like her daily life. And Harley, you have like a really beautiful, expressive, flowing line and um, your use of gesture and body language in particular is basically as good as it gets in uh, comics. <laughs> thanks for saying that. Um, um, well, when you were saying how um, Jason's, uh, his work kind of um, brings out the sound effect of we, I was thinking like, what would the sound effect for mine be? And I was like, it's gonna be like, ugh. <laughs> it's like just too realistic. And <laughs> how many more pages, how much more dialogue do I have to read before this gets fun? Um, it doesn't, I don't know, it like, it's nice to hear you describe it that way. It doesn't feel like that when I make it. And I think like, I, I, it's, it's kind of, it's really an interesting topic for me to think about, um, but I have to like disclaim, I have very little self-awareness about what I do oh. in the process, but I do, but I do know like the common element with all of us cartoonists who have um, decided to commit part of our lives to this, this craft that doesn't, isn't really lucrative at all. <laughs> and just kind of like enjoyed by a small group of like-minded nerds. Um, is this kind of like, you know, just the fact that you've put yourself in this, in this um, world of mark making and, and it's kind of, you know, just creating art itself is such a romantic and kind of inherently useless, um, uh, you know, practice. And I, I, and I think that we all like, just love that fact. And we kind of like, really thrive in it. Um, but the experience is not like we I'm having fun. It's more like, um, within the playful element of making artwork. Um, I feel it's like pretty laborious. Um, not not like the actually just like I'm drawing a truck right now it has to look like a truck. It's more like, because there's the sequential, like the narrative element, it's like, how do I 
take all the things that I love about like, like drawing things and about life and trying to capture people's personalities and how do I transmit that to people I don't know, like people who don't know my internal logic and who will be able to pick up on it. You know, how do I craft it so that it makes more sense to them? And, you know, it's like, what are they interested in? If I just kind of like open up a lot of possibilities with a character and then we just never see the character again, you know, it's like, that's something in the back of my mind will like people be pissed off at me. Um, and it's not, I feel like part of it is like, yeah, being self-conscious and being like, am I, am I not doing the right thing, you know, as if there was a right thing to do. But I think it's like, it, it is kind of a labor that's really important. It's, it's, it's kind of like you take this playful thing of, of drawing like icons that somehow have souls after you give them dialogue and things to do. And then you, I don't know, somehow create a story out of that that will have some emotional, you know, I don't know, will create some emotional meaning for a stranger. And um, so like when I'm kind of, uh, when I'm kind of toiling over the story and, and just trying to figure out like why this page isn't working, it, it seems to be straying way too far or like it seems, the tone seems off. I think it's like the work of trying to just make it coherent for an audience, if that makes any sense. And that sounds like, as I say it, it sounds really uh, joyless. <laughs> but, but I like, for me, I think the, the joy of it is not, I don't know, it's not like the play, I'm already playing because I'm, I'm drawing pictures, like just the fact of that is enough. But the play is like, once it's done, and I feel like I've done an okay job, and then like the pleasure is really for other people to have, if that makes any sense. It, it does. And um, I think of in particular, uh, two, you know, a couple of different kind of like uh, ways of expressing yourself, I see, because in your Popats Pope series, most of the issues were devoted so far to um, the book that became Young Francis, right. except for number four, which was right. short stories. Um, and he, was that giving yourself kind of a break from this? Yeah, that's, that's a perfect uh, thing to bring up within this, this question of like play and is it good? I, I, I needed a mental break from the strain of trying to make it coherent, like a long coherent story that would be satisfying. And I was like, I just, I got to go back to the basics and play with comics. So I did an issue, which was different characters. I just made them up on the spot. Some really like quickly written stories. Um, like I remember there's one story that has the most words it's called bitter drummer and it's about the drummer of a band that's kind of over the hill and he's just disappeared from that life but um, they're trying to set up a reunion concert but I, I remember writing that within just a couple of days and then drawing it really quickly and then being kind of like just inspired by the fact that oh we can like create stories very quickly and like if you kind of force yourself to do it and you know sometimes when you work on a long project you forget the fact that you can finish things and create something that makes sense to another person um, but yeah with that issue I was definitely uh, consciously just trying to to play and have more fun and being uh, be loose and what was the effect for you as an artist afterwards it, I mean like <laughs> I don't really recommend it because I think people should like finish the stories they they say they're going to work on but I it was really refreshing for me it was like I I totally felt like I knew what I was doing after that and then I went back to writing uh what became the second half of my graphic novel Young Francis and it worked a lot smoother after that um, um I think that's super interesting I would like several things when you were thinking about a sound that goes with your work, like instantly I started hearing music and I was like, hmm, it's like the music that's in a film because I think your book is so much like watching a movie. You know, it really has a very strong sense of continuity. Your characters are really well developed. It has a plot, you know, it's very organized. And when you said that your process like sounds joyless, um, to me, it doesn't. It sounds like I definitely get joy from like 
knowing what I'm after and working like slow and steady along the way, you know, like that sounds super joyful. And I think it's just this misconception of what fun means or what joy means. I mean, I don't think drawing is fun, but I get like a lot of satisfaction out of making a book, you know, yeah. um, it is hard work, but it's, um, there's something like deeply, there's a deep pleasure in knowing what you want and knowing how to sort of get there bit by bit by bit, you know, having a goal. And it's like, Jason, your art teacher, that awful story about like how be more expressive. I cannot imagine telling a kid who's like trying to draw something realistically to like not do that. That's so wrong, you know, like a kid really wants to learn how to draw realistically. That's like a, such a natural thing for them to be trying to do. And that a kid might get frustrated or might even think that they're a bad artist for a moment because they're not able to do this thing yet. Instead of saying, let me help you achieve this goal. You know, that's just like, like Hartley, like if you came, if you came to like a bit of a frustrating stop and you needed to do something else for a while and then it made it more clear, like that's the step. That is what art education can do. It can jump in and say, let me help you get to that point because this is mad, this is important. And it is such a, it's, it's a lie and it's irresponsible to say like, you should be having fun instead of trying to do something, <laughs> you know, like, like instead of having an artistic goal. Um, it's, I, one of my friend, my daughter's friends was quoting some art teacher and they were like painting together. And the friend was like, my art teacher says, you can't do it wrong. There's no way to do this wrong. And then like, I was being so good. I'm like, be quiet, Tyler, be quiet. <laughs> and my daughter was like, my mom disagrees with that. <laughs> she could tell. I was like, you can do it wrong. There are lots of ways to do it wrong. <laughs> you know? Like you just do something that isn't what you're trying to do. And that's how you do art wrong. You know, like you're not able to do what you want. That's wrong. <laughs> and it's frustrating. So, uh, uh, you know, and you don't just stuff. tell people just stop worrying about it you know oh that's that's not a problem just like be happy uh, I had a friend uh this is this this might be the worst uh art, art teacher uh <laughs> line I've ever heard but um I had a friend at Academy of Art and uh you know he I guess he was painting and uh the uh the art teacher grabbed his wrist and held it really firmly and said, draw like a man. Whoa. <laughs> that mean. Like Jackson Pollock. <laughs> uh, wow. And uh, it's kind of funny that like, uh, you know, uh, Kyler, of course, um, is, is a teacher. And so obviously has strong thoughts on pedagogy and like how to get things <laughs> across the students in a way that makes sense, but also sort of like, you know, uh, if you're teaching sh auto shop, you don't say, <laughs> put those parts in in whatever way feels good. Yeah, just have fun. It's, <laughs> it's patronizing. And, and when I talk to a lot of art students, especially people who went to art school in the 80s, when you had, when art schools are basically infested with um, failed abstract expressionists who never got their career off the ground, so they're teaching, um, they're like, I didn't learn anything about painting or art or methods or technique. Right. It was all just very like psychobabble. Right. And I, I resented the experience of like, hey, I'm paying you to like to train me. And it kind of gets away from uh, something I think about a lot, which was the old method of teaching art, which was you have uh, you have a master and you have someone who is uh, their student. And, you know, uh, along the way, it's like, you know, they're there to help. They're there to assist you with your stuff. And then you then the the older the older person teaches them technique it's the it's the way things went for like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years until kind of in the modern era 
and um, that that really infects art school today, as we said, and even in teaching comics. Um, I know a lot of people who like go to comic school and don't learn many crucial things. But yeah. um, so, but pursuant to this point of like this is wrong. Um, one question I have, and we'll start with Hartley. Can is, I just jump in to what you're saying? Yeah, please. Because, Go. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think there's always a problem with just thinking there's like one way to do it. So some art educators will really try to hone in on like the spirit of the drawing. So they'll tend towards abstract expressionism and encourage that. And others will be like, you need the basics. You need to draw photorealistically. And that's kind of, it can be lifeless, but you know, also there, there's merit to that. And of course you can kind of combine all that stuff. But what I really liked was when Kyler was describing um, playing with Cabbage Patch Kids as a kid and as individuals, you know, it's not an education um, environment. It's just two kids having fun together. They're expressing their internal logic and they know when they cross the line. And that line for another kid could be completely different. Um, but I think like as artists, what you discover is not really what the rules are, but what, like you're just expressing your internal logic and things that make sense to you and your sensibility. And, you know, there's some cultural things that come into that, like just the kind of music that you first fell in love with and the kind of books that you first really connected to. And you're always gonna be inspired by that stuff. It's like really, you know, deeply set in your memory. But those internal, you know, rules, I, I feel like that's, you know, when you say like, oh, it's really, you know, people like make art to express themselves. I really hate that, that expression because it feels like so selfish and kind of like, it's like, it doesn't matter what you do. It's lovely because, you know, you're being true to yourself. Um, but I think it's it's really cool when you know you just kind of like lay down this like really thoughtful internal logic, and then you see other people who connect to it and it makes sense to them, and and they might see some aspect of life in you know a clear way through that. And um, yeah, I just I really like that idea of like you find your own rules, and it's very personal where those rules are. And uh, sorry, just one more thing is I remember, I remember talking to Seth once, and we were both. Um, we we're both agreeing that one thing that makes us very uncomfortable as individuals is drawing sex scenes and, and like the way around that would be just like drawing silhouettes and you know like that kind of stuff just like cutting to the next scene and it's not to do with like what obviously we, we, we read like whatever you know anything goes but um, it's something inherent to us. Maybe we're just like super prudish or we, we had like weird upbringings, but it's just one of those things that, you know, that stuff becomes your, your DNA and um, it dictates sort of what you put on the page. And uh, don't forget the silhouette is one of Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work. Right, so. <laughs> exactly. So it's still working for us. Exactly. Um, yeah. I. I love exactly what you're saying about like um, there's a difference between you must a teacher telling you if you don't do it in this particular way, it's garbage and whatever. Uh, and that there are rules and there are established rules in art. And obviously part of education is understanding them and then figuring out whether those rules make sense for you. But I always feel like I'm, I'm interested in, and we'll start with Harley uh, or Hartley rather, um, uh, I always feel that every artist has an idea in their head of what they want their art to look like. And in their head, it's perfect. And then on the paper, it's something else altogether. Right. What's that process like for you? What is that struggle like for you? And when you see it on the page, how often does it get kind of close to that? Idea? Right. So it gets close to that, but it's very far from what I have in my head and what it, and it's, it's always the same. Every project I start, I have, I'm like, it's going to be very simple, very minimalistic, um, just pure, I don't know, just like, just focus on gesture and facial expressions. And then I start drawing backgrounds and it gets really detailed. And in the end, I, 
Um, in my editing process for um, kind of cleaning up my art, I, I remove so many lines, like just because I've gone way too far. So I just, I, I'm never, I'm never actually drawing what I want to draw, but I, I know that it works for some people. I'm like, yeah, it's good enough. Like it makes sense. Um, but someday in the future, someday I'm going to make a comic that's exactly my vision and it's, it's going to be so perfect. It'll be like just a few lines, <laughs> it's kind of like closer to John Porcellino. I'm like, that's, that's the way to go. It's because it, it's so expressive. There's so much emotion in his comics. And I love that. The punchline with John, of course, is that, uh, during the period where he was doing his like most pure crystalline, simple art, he was racked with OCD and he would draw the same simple page like 500 times before he felt it was right. So even then the struggle is still there. Yeah. Um, Jason, what about with you uh, with regard to like the image in your head and what comes out on the page? Uh, so yeah, I think uh, like Hartley, I've, I've got, I usually have a, um, a pretty strong vision um, of, uh, of what the book is going to look like. Um, there's uh, like by the, by the time I get to drawing it, there's um, there's not a whole lot of uh, exploration or you know just you know there, there aren't uh, you know uh, you know ha happy happy accidents or happy surprises as a uh, oh what who's that guy that painter happy accidents anyways Ross. Um, oh Bob Ross. Yeah, Bob Ross. <laughs> There aren't there aren't too many of uh, those uh, Bob Ross uh, happy accidents, but um, but yeah, um, I'm uh, I'm ki I'm, ki I'm kind of a meticulous planner, um, so uh, I know you know I've I've heard stories about uh, you know Chris Ware you know just drawing one panel in the upper left hand corner and then inking it and then do, you know working on the next one or whatever which sounds insane. I could, I could never, I, yeah, I, I can never do that. So, you know, when, before I, before I ink my first panel, I usually have the whole book penciled. Um, before, you know, I draw my, you know, my first panel in pencil, I have, you know, the entire book scripted uh, from beginning to end, um, scripted and thumbnail. Uh, so it's yeah, it's um, for for me anyways. It's uh, I'm I do I do I do have that you know that's that really sh strong goal that I'm always uh, you know trying to get towards. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean you know of course like you know like you said it's uh, you know I never I never get like a hundred percent there. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, that's that's my process. Are all phases of your process equally enjoyable to you? No, I I hate inking. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, uh, I don't like lettering. Um, <laughs> but uh, I get everything. I love. I love. I love coming up with the ideas. I love thumbnailing. Uh, pencils are okay. Bas basically, each stage is uh, is less fun than the stage that came before it. It's just, it's just a slow, slow downhill trajectory. <laughs> I wonder if anybody loves the end the most. <laughs> I know a lot of I've people. I've talked to some cartoonists who like uh, who like the end. Really. That last 10%. They, they told me it's, uh, I had a friend who told me uh, inking was like rinsing the dishes. Hmm. <laughs> I, I don't think I've, I've met a cartoonist who says out loud that they love lettering. But... I do. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, let, let's, let's, yeah. And let's go to you and let's, and let's, I want to hear your answer to that particular question as well. I mean, lettering is like the easiest thing for me to do. And so it's like the most relaxing part. So I enjoy it, but it's also like the least satisfying. I mean, it doesn't like, I never feel like, well, I did a great job lettering, you know, um, <laughs> or anything <laughs> like that. Um, so like my light is, so I thumbnail all my pages like this. Usually um, I'll just write a description on my phone, like on notes, you know, I'm in this room and I'm saying this to Zia, you know, and then that those, I go through all those descriptions and then I make the thumbnail pages 
And like, even in the thumbnail page, like the composition usually doesn't change. The layout is like done in this scribble. And then I pencil and then I ink. I never visualize what it's gonna look like in my head. That process, it's like, I, I see the moment. I know I wanna capture it. I make the note, I make the thumbnail. And then I just draw it until the proportions seem right. You know, like I do a ton of erasing, but it's just like, okay, that's a little better. That's a little better. That's a little better. And then when it seems like, okay, everything's like the scale is right. The proportions, right. Whatever. Um, then I ink it and I'm done. Um, there's, it's really interesting to hear like Hartley say, I don't have a lot of self-awareness about the process. And then like immediately you gave a very detailed description of your process. <laughs> it was like totally insightful. <laughs> you uh, like, you so much know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know like what you answer you couldn't, like you don't, aren't aware of, but um, I, there is no part where I'm just like, sitting down I wonder what I should write about today and like here's a bunch of thoughts or ideas like that that, that used to be part of my process like I'd sit there and I would write pages and pages and pages because I'd be in this mood where something's going to happen and like I would usually not use it I now I don't even try that because I just know I'm not going to use it so it's just like I find these moments it's like that's funny dialogue or that's a moment that's going to be something I can depict with drawing or whatever and I never have, I never like run out of those, you know, so I don't ever have to try very hard. Do you draw the moments um, fairly soon after they occurred in real life? Or do you kind of collect I try and to. them as ideas and then kind of- Yeah, no, I do. Like there's like a 10 to 20 notes on my phone and then I'll thumbnail them all and then I'll put them in a binder. And like, I work on just a few pages at a time. You know, I always have like a few in the future, but I don't know how the book is going to end. I don't know anything. And like, sometimes like one of my thumbnails will get six months old and I still like it, but maybe I haven't been drawing it for something. And like, sometimes it does feel too old, you know? So I just don't do it. Right. Uh, it's fascinating. It's sort of like you're capturing a moment. And it's almost like you're just, you're, you're, your process almost sounds like sculpture, where it's like you got a big piece of marble and you chip away everything it doesn't look like your idea. And in this case, it's like there's this image, of like this thing that happened and like you're, you kind of do something and it's like, that seems about, you know, it, it, it goes from like completely abstract to like this idea of like, yeah, that's the approximation of what I want to express. Or not. Of looking at it. I think it's like completely, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could look at it either way. I mean, I'm finding something, you know, like, yeah, I'm not creating something from scratch, you know, like, And then, and then trying to get an idea of what that is in your head. It's, for you, it's like, right. it's there, you've seen it, it was real. Yeah, it's kind of like taking pictures, you know, like I'm documenting this thing. Right. Um, all right, uh, stunningly, we're actually about out of time. Um, that went by super fast. Um, I wanna thank our guests and uh, talk about their most recent books. Kyler's is My Begging Chart, her first book from Drawn and Quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> a very small book. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's, it's apparently is a micro mini comic that you <laughs> put out. Uh, it's, it's brilliant. It's a fantastic book. Uh, Jason, I believe your most recent book, that was Demon, right? That was Demon. Uh, which was epic and was the best combination of um extreme gore and mathematical uh principles that i've ever read in a single book um and then <laughs> and then hartley's most recent book was of course uh young francis a collection from pope hats um from uh from ad house jason's was from uh first second and I still don't understand how you managed to talk them into publishing that book, but kudos. Because <laughs> uh, most of First Second's books are not like that. Um, but I was yes, hoping I mean, it would start a trend. 
well, yeah, it could. It, you may just have to follow up. But uh, and Harley, do you have? Uh, there's an issue of pop out pop hats out. Yes, coming out. Um, no, I'm working on a book, like a full graphic novel for um, Drawn and Quarterly. Oh, that is breaking news for me. Congratulations. That's excellent. Um, well, fantastic. Thank you all so much for being on this panel, which again, um, this for me is, I could talk about artists' intentions and techniques all day long. And I appreciate not only you indulging me, but you really going and providing so many interesting insights and from three people whose approach could not be any more different, which I also really valued. Um, so that is it for this panel. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, hopefully and hope enjoy the other uh, programming this weekend. Thanks very much.